Good morning. Um, I'm sitting here just enjoying getting to do what I get to do. I love the life God's given me. I love the people God allows me to go to church with and serve with. It's a little bit awkward these days. And you might notice I got a lemon on my desk. Uh, I've been out picking fruit from my mom's fruit trees. Lemons, tangelos, oranges, and uh, grapefruit. And uh, anyway, we, we all like growing stuff. And you, why do you have a lemon? Well, actually, I have it there to remind me of something, but it goes so well with my Bible reading here th this morning. And, uh, you know, lemon is sour, makes you pucker. And, uh, you know, who wants to be a sour puss kind of a person? But anyway, uh, we've, got, uh, we've got a story today that we'll look at in a minute. Going to be, if you want to follow along, Mark chapter 2 and Mark chapter 3. Before then, let me just say how great it is to serve God, to have church. And I don't like online church. Uh, I like church. I like all the people getting together and, and to being close. But uh, you know, we'll have our parking lot church, and that's awesome. But if God gives us uh, online church, then we're going to do the best we can to make online church good. Now, as a church staff, we've got things we're sending out to people. Things, if you can't go out and witness to people very easily, um, then find something gospel-oriented. The staff has got a good children's thing and a, a good adult thing that you can text out 10, 15 minutes, and uh, you can send those to friends. And people have got a lot more time right now, and people are, are thinking about eternal things some. People are worried some. They shouldn't be. God's people shouldn't be worried. Uh, but we all do it some, and I'm not saying it's, uh, it's uh, something we don't do. I'm just saying we ought not. Uh, we got a great God. What are we worried about? But we do worry, and uh, we're just carnal is what we are. We've got this old man inside. My new man doesn't worry. He doesn't care about nothing. He's looking forward to seeing Jesus. The old man that's attached to his body, he wants food, comfort, ease, um, the attention of men. And the old, the, the new man, man, he just wants to please Jesus. Doesn't matter. And uh, that's the, that new man's the one that, that gets people to go to the mission field. And, and like, uh, I think Thursday or Friday night of last week, we talked about it at an Aram Judson. Uh, buried three babies and two wives on the mission field. What gets a guy to do that? That's that new man. The new man just says one thing. Let's just tell others of Christ and let's please the Lord. But uh, I, anyway, it's great to be where we are, isn't it? we got food and we obviously, if you're watching this, we've got internet, we've got phones or computers or some kind of device. And, and I've got a Bible that I can read. I've got several Bibles too right here on my desk. Before I get to it, I want to mention, don't forget about our offerings. Let's Let's pay attention, and I know many of you that watch this, you're not going to our church. Uh, I hope you'll give to support your church, and if you don't have a church you're going to, I hope you'll give and support our church. We're sending you the video, but uh, look after your church and, and your church staff and your pastor's uh, needs and things, and uh, and let's pray for our country. Uh, be sure to pray for our president and leaders. They're trying to make decisions, and, and in my lifetime, no president no administration has ever had to face anything like this. And so certainly we ought to be praying for our leaders. A um, couple of quick things before we get to the Bible study. Um, if you want to give or do anything special like that, um, uh, I mentioned uh, between 2 and 3 each weekday, someone will be, a staff member, one of our staff members will be very obviously uh, in, in the office uh, foyer or out front, uh, just hanging around for that hour. Now, there, we may be coming and going all day long, different staff members, because we have... We're running school classes from our, our church uh, classrooms, and, and there's, a, there's still people coming and going, but you may or may not find some, but between two and three each day, there'll be someone right out front, easy to find. You want to pick something up, drop something off, borrow something. If you have something we can do to help you, please do that. Um, and if we can help, I, I say it over and over, please call. You're not a bother at all. And now in the Bible, we're looking here at Mark chapter 2, and uh, the, the Lord is uh, obviously early in his ministry, Mark chapter 2, and people gather together and he preached. And I'm going to read a verse here, Mark chapter 2. Um, and straightway there are many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born by four. So a uh, paralyzed man being carried by four people, and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, uh, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed where on the sick of the palsy lay. 
They literally tore the shingles off the roof, lowered him down through there, right into like a table like this maybe, right in the middle of all the people. I talk about breaking up the meeting. That's an irreverent way to behave. And But when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Our text this morning, verse 6. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there reasoning in their hearts. They were sitting there um, trying to be critical. Uh, they were sitting there doing their very best to slander and to uh, criticize. This, there's a group of people who they have nothing better to do than to, to reason in their heart. They look and they examine and they critique and, uh, and their, their, their whole makeup is one of, uh, of criticism and, and a negative slant. They're not looking uh, and thinking all the great things that are going on. They're not critiquing all the blessings. Um, they're, they're people who sit around and it says they reasoned in their hearts. They're thinking. And here they are being critical of Jesus. Now understand this. If you hear someone being critical... Um, I'm, I just don't like it. I'm going to always take the side of the, the other side from the critics because here, here they're criticizing Jesus. They're, he never did anything wrong. Our Savior is perfect, and there are still critics. Uh, the devil's got his crowd around there. You know, in, in James chapter 1, verse 22, it says this, Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. There are people, they may sit in church and hear things, but they don't live it. And uh, they don't have a heart for others. They don't love others. And they don't invest their time or their resources in others. It's all about them. And a head knowledge without a, a life living the word of God is a horrible way to be. This group of critics, uh, they ignored the fact that here's a crippled man who needs to be healed. Uh, they didn't sit there and say, oh, I hope he heals him. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Uh, this man's been paralyzed. And wouldn't it be great? His maybe he was all his life that way. He, wouldn't his parents be happy? Maybe an accident happened early, later in life, and he's married. Wouldn't his wife and children be happy to have their husband and father now? Well, they didn't sit there praying for for God to do a miracle. They were critical and slanderous and accusing, and and that's how people are. You know, we've got a culture running around. They they don't care that people are getting saved and baptized. That people are surrendering their lives to serve God, that missionaries are being sent out, and, and uh, Sunday school is being taught to children, and buses are picking up the poor that no one cares about. They're sitting there reasoning in their hearts. Now, if you're there, and by the way, it makes God angry. That kind of thing makes God angry. Look over to chapter 3, just the next page. A similar situation. I'm in Mark chapter 3 and verse 4. And he said unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day, or to do evil, to save life, or to kill? But they held their peace. Because there was a man there that had a crippled hand, and he was and Jesus called him into the middle of the, of the group there and where the, the people were gathered. And, uh, boy, they, it's the same group of people, critical people, slanderous people. Oh, let's see if he, because they're looking for any little tidbit, any little thing. He might have violated some rule, some so one of the Pharisaical laws, there's, there's clear-cut laws in the Old Testament, and then the rabbinical laws, they interpreted it, and they began to apply it in all these different ways. And all these people, they were looking for any little thing that uh, Jesus might have done wrong. And in verse 5 of Mark 3, And when he had looked around about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, uh, Jesus not only was angry with them, he was grieved with the hardness of their heart. Um, you know, we've got to understand, um, our Lord gets angry. This pablum, soft, and, and mushy kind of Christianity uh, that, uh, that loves the devil and, and loves the critic and, and uh, loves the false accuser and loves the lazy, uh, loves false doctrine, uh, that's not Christ-like. Jesus he was pretty strong on some things. Remember John the Baptist, some people came and he said, you're a generation of vipers uh, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come. They didn't kill John and Jesus because he, they fit into society. They didn't arrest the apostles because everything they said was warm and fuzzy. Uh, you can't preach the Bible and walk a holy life 
and live for God and not have some folks get critical because the devil hates people who are doing the business of God. And it's just a reality. So Jesus got angry at this kind of an attitude um, while picking apart every little area of our Lord's ministry, while criticizing every little thing. They ignored the miracle. A man was able to go back to work again. His Both his hands were working, and he was going to be able to provide for his family. No, they just sat there, and they ignored the fact that the unloved were being loved. They ignored the fact that the poor hear the gospel. They ignored the fact that, uh, that there were broken hearts being healed and, and families being mended. And Oh, they ignored all the good that God's doing. And you know what? Today, all through these 2,000 years, the devil's got his people. Uh, well, some of them, they're in the political spectrum, and you know which group they are. They could care less what good's being done as long as they can find some little thing to criticize. And yes, it makes Jesus angry. You know, I'm just going to be the one who cheers for the Sunday school teacher, who rejoices in the person who runs a bus and picks up the poor kids who, who don't normally get to Sunday school unless somebody goes and gets them. I, I'm going to cheer for those people who go out soul winning and witness and, and share their faith and get people saved. I'm thrilled about it. You know what? I am thrilled. I would, look, we're, we're weak. We're frail people. Let's just do something for God with our lives. I'm, I have got a problem with people who sit around doing nothing, being critics. I've got a real problem with that, and I believe the Lord does too. Uh, they criticize while they never go to a jail service and never bring the gospel to the prison. Uh, they criticize and critique every little thing that someone's doing, but they'll not go to a rest home and spend their free weekends uh, in the rest homes uh, giving the gospel to people who can't get out and can't get to church. Oh, what a generation of, uh, a lot of them, these are newscasters and sometimes sports casters and, and they're, uh, they're the politicians and they're the Christians as well, or at least they say they're Christian. They attend church some, and I have some serious questions in my heart uh, how near to Christ you could be and be such a slanderer of that which is going on for the glory of God. Uh, this look at look at chapter three and verse six. He, he says, and the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, against Jesus, how they might destroy him. They didn't care that a man was just healed. They're trying to figure out how to destroy this man. And it says they went to the Herodians. Now that's interesting. So here's the religious slanderers. Here's the religious critics. And they went to the Herodians. Now, the Herodians were Jewish people. Herod was the secular ruler over that region. And the Herodians were people who were Jewish who would stay close enough to the government, close enough to the courts, close enough to the laws, close enough to the political realm that they had the inside scoop and they knew what was going on and what wasn't going on. And so these religious Pharisees, these people that were critics of Jesus, they went to the people who knew the ropes. They knew what was going on in, in the, the political or the government or the legal system. And they, they thought maybe, you know, they're close to the governor or the mayor. Maybe they'll know how we can get this guy. And these people, they shouldn't have had their loyalty to this godless secular government, but they did because it gave them power. And they didn't care that they were affiliated with complete heathen. What they cared about is that they could influence people and criticize people and slander people. And uh, well, what a what a wicked and worthless life. You know, and I feel bad. Somebody's married to these people. Somebody's married to that woman or man who's a who who looks with criticism and looks with slander. And there's no sweetness comes out of their mouth. There's no compliment. There's no grace. There's no rejoicing. There's no wow. Isn't God good? And, uh, you know, there are people who criticize soul winning. You know what, John 3, 16, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Believe. So we go out and we tell people, you know, you could get saved if you put your faith in Christ. He died for you. He was buried. He rose from the dead. Do you believe that? And if they say yes, they believe those things, then do you understand you're a sinner in need of a savior? Well, yeah. And if they say yes, I know that. You know, that's all you need to know to get saved that you're a sinner, that Christ died for you, was buried, that he rose again. That's the gospel. And, uh, and you know, we, someone, I ask him, any, any reason you wouldn't want him to save you? I mean, show him the verses and, 
Any reason you wouldn't want them to save you? No, no reason at all. And pray with them and they'll trust Christ and we'll rejoice that that person is saved. And then some critic, oh, they, you're just telling people it's a few words and they get saved. What is so hard about rejoicing? Somebody got saved. Why the average critic in American churches today didn't believe the thief on the cross got saved because Jesus said it too fast and it, he didn't take enough time going through the gospel. Man, I am so glad that I'm a part of the doers of the word. Let's just try and love people. Let's let's get those buses running. Boy, the hardest thing for me right now with this coronavirus thing going on is those rest homes all across America. Because churches all across the nation bring the gospel to the convalescent homes. I wonder, I prayed, uh, the Lord helps help people live a little longer that would get saved if they heard the gospel. And uh, I wonder how many people, their life is right now in the brink of facing eternity and they've not heard the gospel because we've not been able to get into those homes. And we ought to pray for those in rest homes. And, and what about our poor, the poor children who aren't going to get to church? And, and uh, so one of our uh, men was talking about some kids, you know, they can call their children who rode their bus or went to Sunday school and uh, maybe visit them in, in, a, in an appropriate manner. And um, the kids, they're not getting schoolwork done. A lot of these kids are so poor, they don't have any internet. And they don't have a way to access work from teachers. And they're not getting their schoolwork done. And you know, the one person that's taken a moment or two to love on them, it's a Sunday school teacher. How I love the Sunday school. And it bothers me that we don't have Sunday school going on. It bothers me the children who are being forgotten. And who knows what heartbreak going on in their lives. Man, people of God, pray. Pray for your country. Pray for your church, whatever church it is that you attend. And uh, pray for the poor. And pray for the elderly. So let me read again in verse uh, in, in Mark chapter 2, uh, where we started in verse 6. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there reasoning in their hearts. Reasoning. These people are the critics and they were trying to figure out a way to make Jesus look bad. Let me tell you something. We need to figure out a way to make Jesus look big and good and wonderful. Let's let's go into our day. If you can't get out, fine. Just today I sent a couple things out, email and text, uh, the gospel to little children and uh, the gospel uh, to adults. And, and let's send this stuff out to people in cyberspace. They don't have to read it any more than passing a track out in the grocery store they've got to read it or knocking on someone's door they've got to take a track but folks we need to be the light of the world this world out there needs christ and i want to magnify him i want to lift him up and honor and glorify him uh, let's just do our best and, and to, to love people to love the work of god to love the people of god to love the house of god and uh, you know what I, I don't hate people who are critics and and the, the, the connivers and all this, the people who run to the Herodians trying to find some way to use some uh, whatever it might be. You know, I just feel bad for them. What a miserable life. I love life. I love my wife. I love my life. I love my kids. I love my church. I love my faith. I love my Bible. What a great privilege it is to serve God. What an honor to be children of the King. I hope you'll take time today. Be good to people. Love them. Be kind. Understand there's some people worried and fretting a little bit, uh, but God's good and God is faithful. And, uh, and you know what? He never changes. He's always the same and you can trust him. Now, uh, we've also got, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you're at home and you've got time, we've got our weekday nights of um, famous lives. Uh, we're going through some great people. You'll learn just in a short time, me or some of us, we're doing some things. And then our kids' time. I get more adults commenting on the afternoon kids' show. You'll love it. Uh, let's just stick together, walk with God, and, and be sure God knows you love him. Would you do that? He's a wonderful Savior.